Ever since the foundation of the PU, or Persistent Universe and Star Citizen, it's always been true that two people in two ships is better than two people in one. In 3.14, that's changed, and I talked about that a bit in my 3.14 video, so if you've not seen that, you should definitely go and check it out. In this video, though, I'm going to take you guys through the best multi-crew ships that Star Citizen has to offer to give you an idea of which ship might best fit you and a couple of your friends. So sit back, relax, and if you like this video and you want to see more, don't forget to let me know by hitting that like and subscribe button if you think I deserve it by the end. And also don't forget to check me out over my Twitch channel where I stream every Saturday, Monday and Wednesday. Now the first multi-crew ship you probably thought I was going to talk about is the Drake Cutlass Black, and we will get to that but there are a couple of ships you should also consider if you're flying with a friend. One of them being this old ship, the Anvil Gladiator. It's a maneuverable small bomber that's capable of carrying size 5 torpedoes and an array of different missiles from size 1 to 3, each of which capable of taking out different sized targets and packing a real punch against even larger ones like capital ships and subcaps. Best of all though, not only do you control two size 3 weapons as the pilot, but your co-pilot will also be at the helm of a size 3 weapon turret, capable of dishing out a huge amount of DPS thanks to the new capacitor changes in 314. Which, as a refresher, is why turrets are so dang powerful in this patch, and why having a friend with you in any multi-crew ship is going to make a huge difference in your ability to survive an engagement with not only NPCs, but real players as well. Now the Gladiator is actually a ship designed to be flown in squadrons, so flying together with a couple of other people also in Gladiators would probably be for the best, but flying solo with another friend is an option as well. If you're interested, this ship is rarely on sale on the website, but can be yours in-game for just under 2 million AUEC, so make sure you head out and check one out today if you're interested. But if a bomber doesn't quite strike your fancy, you can also check out the Anvil Hurricane, which is also a two-seater, complete with two size 4 hardpoints for the pilot, along with a conservative set of missiles, and a massive size 3 gun turret with four size 3 weapons, for your co-pilot to use. This ship is meant to take out large targets, but will do perfectly well taking out ships its own size, and I think that this might end up being one of the meta ships of 314, especially if you go on and equip a bunch of ballistic weapons, which won't give you a whole lot of time to play in the field, but will allow you to kill somebody within a few seconds if that's your game. One of these bad boys will run you a far more conservative 1.2 million, offering quite a lot of bang for the buck if I might say so. I definitely recommend you give this ship a try. Next on the list is a request by the community, the Argo Cargo. This is not a multi crew ship, do not use this ship. Ugh, I need to stop taking requests. Another ship worth mentioning here is the F-7CM, which is the premier fighter of the UEE Navy. However, this medium-sized fighter has a bit of an issue right now with its co-pilot seat in that it doesn't really provide much of an advantage considering that that turret that they can use is limited to the same capacitors as the main ship weapons, making it just as effective as if somebody were using it solo. So unfortunately for now, the F-7C-M is going to be relegated to being just a solo ship unless you just want to have some fun with your friends, but not really provide any additional advantage. This is unfortunate, and I hope that this is rebalanced at some point in the near future. The next ship on my list is actually a pair of ships as they're trying to target the same segment. I've done a video on these two before as a review, but I'm going to revisit them now because they're far more valuable now as multi crew ships than they ever were before. First, of course, is the Cutlass Black and Blue variants, excluding the red because it doesn't have a turret, and the Freelancer series and all of its variants. For the Cutlass series, you've got four size 3 weapon slots for the pilot, and you've got a size 3 weapon turret for the co pilot. But you've also got a co pilot seat directly behind the pilot seat, allowing for a third person to potentially launch missiles at a target using the new missile operator mode. This we found to be pretty darn effective. 
Now the advantage of the Cutlass Black is its versatility. It's got a big cargo bay and so you can do a lot more with it than just some combat. And so that's why a lot of people tend to choose that over other ships. But you've also got the Freelancer to consider. While it doesn't have a big turret like the Cutlass Black, it does actually have an extra shield generator and four size three weapons for the pilot trading a little DPS for the pilot to control versus the gunner. Not to mention that if you choose the MIS variant of the Freelancer, you'll have a ton of missiles to throw at your enemy as well that your co-pilot can also use, making the Freelancer a formidable vessel to come up against just the same as the Cutlass Black. Now you can always rent to either of these vessels to try them out with your friends to see which one better fits you. Personally, I like the Freelancer, but the Cutlass is my go-to ship most of the time. Well, the Freelancer and the Cutlass Black are around 100 to 125 starter packs if you buy them off the website. You can also purchase these ships in-game. The Freelancer going between 1.6 to 2.5 million, depending on the variant, and the Drake Cutlass series goes for between 1.4 and 2.5 million, depending on the variant you choose for that. Next up are two solid ships to choose from if you're looking to up your game just a bit for multi-crew gameplay. First of the two I'm going to talk about here in this section of the video is the RSI Constellation series. The one you see featured here on the screen is the Andromeda variant, which is classified as a gunship, but you also have a couple of other variants to choose from if you're looking to take a ship like this into combat. Now this ship was traditionally a bit of a joke in the community for PvP and PvE, never being particularly good at anything, but being amazing on paper. In 314, however, even its modest two size two weapon turrets are formidable enough to take out light fighters on their own. And that's before we even talk about the massive four size four gimbaled hard points, massive array of missiles, and even a fighter that can be detached from the back that comes standard with all variants except for the Taurus. That means you've got a possible crew complement of six for the Constellation. Now the other ship I wanna talk about in this segment is the Vanguard series, which is what you're seeing flying here, chasing the county down on the tundras of Yella. While the Vanguard series only has two seats available for its multi-crew function, it is formidable. The size two weapon turret does a lot of damage to small ships, and the coaxially mounted size two weapon cluster, as well as the size five weapon hardpoint for the pilot, are extremely powerful. Not to mention that depending on the variant, you'll also have a large array of missile mounts that you can also lob at your enemies. That makes the matchup between a Vanguard seem not so poorly matched, with the Connie having a little bit of an advantage here. Both these ships need to have a full crew to really see their potential unlocked, especially with the Constellation, as the little fighter that can be detached from the rear can pose a real threat to any would-be attacker, as it can end up making your attacker become confused and not able to decide which target to go after first. But don't overlook the Merlin itself as a powerful little ship to employ in combat. It does have two size one weapon hardpoints and a coaxially mounted size two Gatling cannon, which is nothing to scoff at, especially when you consider that ballistics are now much more powerful than they ever were before. For me, the Constellation though is probably my favorite of the two and maybe even my favorite multi-crew ship of 314. The Vanguard variants can be had for between 2 to 3.4 million AUEC, available at multiple different locations around the verse. The Constellation, on the other hand, is a bit more expensive, but there's a lot more punch with the package. Coming in at between 3.5 to 5.6 million AUEC, depending on the variant you want to buy. The variant in this video being the Andromeda at 3.5 million. Next up in this segment is the vaunted Mercury Star Runner from Crusader. A ship that sports a bottom and top turret, each featuring size 3 weapons, and even a slave turret for the pilot to control. Making it so that you've got 6 size 3 weapons that you can bring to bear on a given target. While this ship isn't the most formidable of combat ships in the lineup, it's certainly something you can take out into PvP and PvE if you're cautious. The Mercury Star Runner isn't a very tanky ship. Its advantage is that it's very fast, especially in a straight line, and much more maneuverable than pretty much any other ship in its class. 
Meaning that if you're really serious about taking the ship into real combat against players, that only very experienced pilots need apply. Still, if you and three other friends still decide to fly the Mercury Star Runner, you'll be safe in knowing that you're pretty well protected against small fighters such as a Gladius. In this particular scenario you see on the screen, a Gladius ended up attacking us while we were filming, and I just told the MSR to defend itself, and well, the results speak for themselves. Should you decide that this ship is for you though, be advised that it's a bit more expensive as far as ships go on this lineup at 4.9 million AUEC, so be ready to save a little bit to purchase this ship for you and your friends. Next up on the list though is a ship that can potentially provide you a lot more bang for your buck if combat is your game, and that of course is the Anvil Valkyrie. While it's technically a dropship, it doubles nicely as a gunship should the need arise. It comes equipped with a manned bottom and top turret, each having two size 3 weapon hardpoints, as well as two wing remotely operated hardpoints that each have a single size 3 weapon. Then you've also got two additional size 1 hardpoints that can be swung out from the side doors as you deliver your marine complement to the field. And finally, you've got two size, two weapons that are slave to the pilot, him or herself. All of this together means that it can deliver a massive punch to a target and defend itself while delivering troops and gear to the front lines. It's a solid ship for taking into multi-crew PvP and PvE. So I'm sure you're going to see a lot of these Valkyries coming in the Xeno threat as well with the Nine Tails event when 314 goes to PU. This ship can be yours for the bargain price of 4.5 million AUEC, and for the amount of versatility it provides, I'd say that's a pretty good deal. Next up is the Retaliator from Aegis Dynamics, a large bomber that's capable of delivering size 9 torpedoes to a target at great distance, and even dumb firing them directly at unsuspecting ground targets. It comes complete with 5-man turrets, two of which sporting size 3 weapons, and the remainder sporting size 2s, but remember that in 314, all turrets are extremely effective, and so just getting up close to this thing as an enemy is going to be something you're going to want to think twice about. Over the course of the past two weeks, we've gotten into a number of engagements with players and NPCs, and nearly always came out on top inside this ship when fully manned. And it's a blast to use against really big targets, which are traditionally pretty hard to kill. Stuff like Idris's, other retaliators, and stuff like Carex. And this ship can be yours for a steal at 4 million AUEC. If you plan to take your friends into combat to go up against really big ships and capital ships, then this is one of those ships that you're going to want to have in your arsenal. Next up, we're stepping up the game just a little bit more with the Carrick. It's a ship that many of you may already know, and it's one of those ships that could be classified as a subcapital ship. It's got its own medical bay and facilities on board, as well as its own hangar for a small parasite vessel. This one's going to be a favorite for those of you who want to do a lot of different things out in the verse aside from combat, because while it can defend itself with its four size four turrets, it's also capable of doing exploration and just being out there independently with its large storage area. If you want to find out more about the Carrick, you can find out about that in my Architect Reviews The Carrick down below. While originally made for the UEE Navy, it was never intended as a frontline vessel. Still, we've taken it to the front lines against ships like the Idris and come out on top. It's perfectly capable of combating large ships as well as small ships, and is something you may want to bring to the front line if you want to do things like cover for smaller ships, because its signature can also block out other ships' ability to lock on anything within a 500 meter radius. But before you get too excited about this amazing ship, its price tag may give you pause at 26.6 .6 million AUEC. That's going to take a little time to save up for, so be ready to do quite a few missions. Before we get to the top spot for multi-crew combat ships in Star Citizen, I have a couple of honorable mentions. First is the 600i, which is a luxury ship that can also double as a fun little multi-crew ship if you want. Then you've also got the transport ship, the M2 and C2, which each have their own set of turrets, the M2 having a bit more with a front turret and a set of rear mounted turrets. Finally, you've got the Caterpillar, which is a hauler complete with two size 4 turrets. But none of these ships are meant to be taken into combat aggressively, they're more defensive in nature. So what's at the top then? 
While there are many other ships I could put on this list as great alternatives for doing multi-crew combat, this list couldn't possibly be complete without the indomitable Shark of the Black, the Aegis Hammerhead. A gunship bristling with six turrets each with four size four weapons, making it the most lethal ship to get up close and personal with in the game. This thing has no blind spots. If you're in range, you better hope you're good at dodging laser fire because you're probably a few seconds away from exploding. And while the hammerhead is really made for going after smaller targets, it's perfectly capable of going after your large ships as well, such as the Idris, which would probably be at the top of this list were it not still unflyable. Darn developers holding it back for the single player campaign. The price here though may surprise you. It's not as expensive as the carrot coming in at 12.5 million. That's still a price you're gonna have to save up for, but it's well worth it to master the skies with one of these. Just be ready to dodge stealth bombers and retaliators, cause those things can really screw you up. One thing worth mentioning here though is that with every patch we usually get a new ship, and with 315 we're probably gonna get my replacement favorite multi-crew ship, the Redeemer. But we'll have to wait until that patch comes out to figure out just how good this thing actually is. So for now, that's my list of the best ships for multi-crewing in 314, and if you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do. Special thanks to the Armco community who helped me film this video. If you want to find out more about how to join that community, check out the description below. See you next time.